Hi everyone and welcome to part 2 in our Let's Create Half-Life. In this two-parter we've set up the task of recreating the first aid charging machine that you found in Half-Life games. In the first episode we worked on the functionality of the machine itself, allowing you to walk up to it, interact with it to replenish your health, depleting the machine's charge. In this episode we're going to go over how to create the cosmetic appearance of the actual machine, how to set up the animation, how to set up the uh, the liquid inside the tubes and all that sort of thing as well to allow us to create this um, half-life type machine. Now I'm not much of an artist so I bear with me with my uh, crappy models but I essentially made a model and made some textures for you guys so if you want to follow along you can download the models and the textures from a zip file in the description below so help yourself to that for free otherwise you can use your own models it's totally up to you whatever it works it's totally down to you. So you want to import the stuff uh, that I've provided and that includes these four textures as well as our um, animation. So when I import the animation in, I want to make sure I tick skeletal mesh, import mesh and make sure skeleton is set to none. Then you want to open up the advanced options. If you don't see them, click on a little arrow to exceed the advanced options and you'll see vertex color import option. You want to make sure that says replace. And that will make sure then it's using the vertex color associated to the model instead of creating its own vertex colors, which we need. Click import and in it comes. Now it comes with two materials, one's for the glass and one's for the actual machine itself. We've got a mesh, animation, physics asset and a skeleton. So first thing we're going to do is work on our glass material because that's probably the simpler one. So the glass one is the blin, so you want to rename this one um, first... Ooh, first aid glass and you want to open this up and in here we're going to replace the parameter with our texture now the texture we're using is the first aid diffuse which is the base color and plugging that in and it's UV mapped to a certain part of that map so it's going to bring in a certain uh, sort of texture to it and then we want to make sure this is a translucent material so we can actually see through it. So with it selected, go down to blend mode on the left hand side and change it from opaque to translucent and that'll make it see through. And then we've got opacity. So the opacity is going to be a value. So hold down the one key and left click and you can create a, uh, a single constant value which we can plug into opacity. And I'm going to click on it and set its value in the details panel on the left here to 0.2. When you hit apply, and then save and you're done here and that will create our glass material for our test tube next we're going to go into the Lambert 1 which is its main sort of texture so I'm going to change the name of this one to first aid matte and open it up similarly we want to replace the parameter with the base color diffuse map so put in a texture sample and look for the first aid diffuse map. The RGB value will go into the base color and then you can hit apply. Now at a very basic level that will get us what we want for the model's appearance however there's lots of other things we want to add to it as well. So to see the, finish, the almost finished product we've got the model here and you can see the glass material there working and you can see the liquid is now see-through in the, in the test tube. Okay, and if you want to see the animation, we go to the animation, and you can see the animation working. Okay, so with that done, we're going to work on a bit more with our texture here on the material. So we need another texture sample, and this texture sample is going to be the emissive one. So I can look for the first aid, and I want the emissive. Oh, wrong one, there we go. And the emissive has two channels, there's a red channel and a green channel. The red channel is referring to the liquid and the green channel is referring to the screen on the on the panel. Now I wanted them two different colours because I want to set two different values for each one. One's going to be more emissive than the other. So with the green one, I'll use the green channel here and I'm going to plug that into a multiplier which then I can plug into the emissive colour. Changing the constant B here to something like 2 will do just fine. 
Now to see how this is going to look in game, um, we can use the little teapot icon to set a preview mesh. To make it work with our one, we have to select the mesh in our content browser and then hit the little teapot icon and it will replace the preview sphere with your um, preview mesh. So with that selected, it should come through in a second. You can see the emissive color come from the screen there. So with that done, we want to multiply that by the color. So multiply again. And then it put that into emissive. And now you have a more realistic rendering of a screen. Because screens emit light. Next, I want to also include the emission of this uh, liquid here. Make it have a little sort of uh, radioactive glow to it. So with this red channel here, I'm going to do a multiply out. And that will get us the value for our, uh, uh, our, our stuff. Our liquid. I don't know what you'd call it. The first aid liquid. And I'm going to put this a value as 5. So this is why I needed two channels, because one's going to be multiplied by 2, one's multiplied by 5. Then I want to multiply it again by the RGB of this. So multiply this by here. And now I want to combine the two to both go into emissive, because you can't have two nodes going into one. So we're going to add and then drag it into emissive color. Add will combine the two textures together and it will do it just fine because they are got a, they have both got a black background so black is zero so it won't do anything weird with the textures and now you've got a more radioactive glow of the liquid in the in the test tube and we've actually got the uh, panel light up as well okay next is our specular so let's do our specular so texture sample and we'll do first aid and we'll do the specular and this simply we're going to plug into the specular and leave it as is and specular is handle how shiny something is so the thinking is that the first aid uh, panel at the top here maybe perspex so it's a bit more shinier um, and this screen is going to be have a bit more of a shine to it be a bit more metallic and Speculary, okay. Okay, and I think that'll do it for the base texture anyway. Okay, so I'm going to drag this lot out like so and just do it as a, a comment here. We'll call this one base color. Okay, so the reason why we're separating it out is because we also want this liquid to go up and down. Okay, so at the moment, what it's actually got here, it's a bit, it can be a bit hard to see because it is a liquid inside of something else. So, if the, believe me when I say, we vertex colored the top vertices of this liquid here white using our modeling program. And because that is white and everything's black, we can control the offset of that liquid. So, we're going to be using the world position offset to change stuff in that liquid jar there. So we need a few things. We need the vertex color, and that'll be the input for the vertex color. And the vertex color, we can say, uh, we can mess about with the world position, world position offset using this vertex color. So if I do um, come out of here and do a multiply, and I want to go up, only up and down. So I'm going to multiply it by a three vector. Uh, which is going to be in the Z, which is blue. We're going to change that to 1. And with there, we're going to multiply it um, by a value. I'll hit apply so you can actually see things going in real time here. If I do cut loads of stuff out, by the way, it's because we're waiting for these bars, that's all. So let's multiply here. We can drag out and multiply that again by how much of a difference we want to make on the vertices here. We've then now plugged into world position offset. Then the value we're changing is on a second multiply here. This value controls the height of those vertices. So these will be controlled by a variable. So the variable will be a scalar parameter. So search for a scalar parameter 
and we're going to call this one as um, charge. And the charge is going to go between a value of 0 and 1. And we're going to use that as an alpha on alert to determine what value this multiplier should have. So right click in the space and search for lerp. And you're looking for a linear interpolate. And a linear interpolate has two values, a and b, and an alpha. The alpha determines which position between value a and value b the output will actually be. So if the alpha is 0 0.5, it will choose a value that is halfway between a and b. So my charge is going to act as the alpha. So I'm going to drag that into alpha. And when charge, by default value, is going to be 1. So let's change it to 1. And when it's the default value, we're going to be using uh, b. b is the 1 in this case, okay? And a is 0. So when it's full, b is going to be a constant value of 1. When it's a, though, we want to go down, and you want to go down to do minus 15. So, in fact, because B, we actually put a zero, we could have no, so it has no effect on it. So, now it would go between zero, uh, between A, sorry, and B. A is minus 15, which is at the bottom, so that's when charge is zero. And when charge is one, it will be uh, zero, which is full charge. Plug that into your B slot and multiply. And then hit apply and then we can save that out so now we have a material that has a parameter on it to use a parameter on a material though you can't just use the base material you have to use an instanced version of that material so we're going to right click on our first aid mat here and create material instance we're then going to go into our mesh and change its material to use that instance instead hit save so now what will happen is if I change the value, it should now affect the well position offset of that liquid. So to show you this, we're going to go into our charging station. And inside our charging station, we're going to set the material here, the mesh, to use our skeletal mesh. So first of all, we don't want a static mesh, we want to get rid of that. Instead, we want to add a skeletal mesh to our scene and choose the first aid charger. And this is up in the air, off the wall a little bit, so I'm going to position it like so. Next, I'm going to go into the event graph. Now in the event graph, we set up the charging of our uh, machine. So you're looking for the part where you find the charge changing. So you find the charge changing. Um, where is it? Uh, here, so here's the charge. So with the charge, we can then use this to change the value in our parameter. So drag your skeletal mesh out and choose get it out. And then we're going to set scalar parameter value on materials. And you want to plug that in between like so. Now the name of the parameter has to match exactly what was on our material. So we call it charge. And the parameter value has to be the return value that we've got going on there. Hit compile and we're done here. So now in the world, if I go up to and push play and go up to the machine and interact with it, we should, if it's working, see the green bar go down. Ding, done. So the final job is to get this animation playing when we push the key and when we let go of the key to play it in reverse. So for this to work, we need to set up a montage. So we need to right click on our animation, create an in montage, and we'll leave it as it is. We then need to create an animation blueprint for that montage to work in. So go to animation, animation blueprint, and you will choose your first aid charger as the skeleton, and we can name this one first aid anim, and open this up. Now it's a really simple um, animation graph, there's not too much in it. Um, what you want to do is go into your anim graph, which should look like this. And we want to get a slot in here, so the animation from the montage will actually work. So we want to get slot, default slot, and plug that in. Now because the rest of the first aid machine has no animation, we can leave the source block uh, blank. So that's all you need for this to work. 
With that done, we're going to hit save and close that. Next, we're going to the actual montage itself. In the montage, we need to set up a looping section. So find the part where you want to start the loop, which should be here. And I'm going to right click on my timeline and create new montage section. And we're going to call this one start loop. And on the start loop, that is the part that's going to loop. So to do that, we need to go down to our sections area down here. And you see the timeline says default section and then the start loop section. That means it's going to play the whole entire thing basically. But to make it loop a section, this start loop section for example, we can click on it and then click on start loop button again and it'll turn it blue. This means that it's going to loop. So now when I push play, and if I show you the timeline, you can see the timeline red bar going along. It will now loop back to the green line and just do this forever and ever and ever. We hit save on there and close this. Next, in our actual charging station blueprint, we're going to drag our skeletal mesh out and tell it to play montage. And connect that up to the start of your depletion. The montage you want to play is your first, char first aid charger montage. Leave the play rate at 1, start position at 0, start session at none, and that will do there. Next, we want to make sure that Skeletal Mesh is using the correct animation blueprint. So click on Skeletal Mesh, then on the right hand side, change the Anim class to First Aid Anim. Hit Compile. So now, when I push Play, it should turn on the animation, but won't stop it when I let go of the key, and it will just do that forever. Okay, so to make it not do that forever and ever and ever is we have to make it so when we let go of the key play the montage in reverse and stop it so in your charging station go find end depletion drag a skeletal mesh out again say play montage again and this time we're going to change the montage play rate to minus one and the starting position we want to change to where part we want to start the reversing from. So to find that out, go into your first aid charger and you want to scroll your playhead to the part that you want to start the reverse. So I'm going to go from about here. So important to note, I'm going to do it before the loop starts. So and then looking down at the bottom here, I can see the percentage is 30%. So roughly at 30%, I want it to start the reverse. So change the starting position then to 30%, which is 0.3. And then hit compile. I then hit play, and if I now hold down E and then let go of E, it reverse back to its starting position. And also, when it ends and runs out of, anima of a charge, it will also deplete. Again, push play. I hold down E the whole entire time now, and then it will reverse. Pretty good, eh? So the final thing I'm going to do before we call it at night is we'll just change the uh, depletion rate so it's a bit more uh, friendly to 0 0.1, 0 0.1 and we'll make it increase the uh, player health by 0 0.08, 0 0.08. So final test, we'll get to see it in all its glory, hold down E, and then it refill my health, back up to full health, and then close itself down, like so. And there we have a working first aid med machine from Half-Life. Thank you very much for joining us on this two-parter. If you like what I do, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Also, if you want to support me, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryanelli, where just $1 will get you access to many videos before anyone else. Thank you so much for all my supporters and fans. This wouldn't be possible without you guys, so thank you once again for all your continued support. Once again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.